cool. What do you think to the new intro? Well, in this video, we'll do something different. I've never done a review or preview or anything like that. So I'm going to show you what you're waiting for with the Evernet Smooth Stepper, which I can say is well worth the wait. It may seem to you that it's taken a long time to write the plugin, but I can tell you from experience. I've got a few plugins of my own, some custom ones on my machine, and you can spend a whole week writing a routine that you're using that works absolutely perfect. And then a few weeks down the road, or a month down the road, Mac 4 will suddenly think, wow, we can do it that way. Now when they change something in the background, it can break what you've written. So you've got to rewrite it all again. Or it can be something like because there's WX widgets running in the background here. You could be using a command that's within WX widgets, which the people at WX widgets decide we're not going to use that command no more. So they take it out of their SDK. So now you've got to write another routine. But anyway, apart from that, it's very well worth waiting for. This is the beta version I'm using and I can't guarantee what I'm going to show you in here will be totally exactly like the release version. There could be things changed, there could be things added in. So let's stop babbling and let's get on and have a look. So the first thing that hits us when we start up the configuration is the first tab is just some general guidelines on how to set up the new plugin. Straightforward steps, like it says, is number one, configure your pin. Number two, assign it to a signal, whether it's an input or an output. Straightforward, well, you'll see that in a moment. Moving across to the generals tab, We've got our smooth stepper IP address, we've got a buffer size, and we've got the plugin frequency we can now change. Moving across to the motors, the actual axis settings on here, you've got a choice whether you're going to set your motors as step and direction, quadrature, or clockwise and counterclockwise. And then we've got a spindle settings down here as well. The one thing I do like about these is I'm using PWM and obviously there's nothing written down there at the moment but it would be nice the same as the relay it's probably not been added yet but will be there is this little line at the bottom which is telling you which signals to use in the signals tabs the inputs and outputs those little hints during the configuration they're pretty much handy for me. Well, I'm sure they will be for you too. Moving on to the pins config, it looks pretty much similar to the old plugin, but uh, there are quite a few differences in it. As usual, the port 2 direction and port 3 direction of the pins are there, the same as normal. If you do have an input within a box and you swap it to outputs, you will get a warning just letting you know it will delete what you've set up for that pin. Your active lows are all set in here as before. Anything to do with your ports and pins, all active low settings should be done within the plugin config. First column, straightforward, lets you know whether you've got an output or an input pin assigned there. Your alias, now this is optional, this is purely f for you. If you want to assign port 1 pin 2 as X step, which I have, then absolutely fine. It just gives you something to remember later on what this pin is you're going to assign it to. If you don't put it in, anywhere else in the config, you can refer port 1 pin 2 as port 1 pin 2. And of course, on the inputs, it's now been added noise filtering, a debounce, just to help out with some of these mechanical limit switches. 
Uh, just to set something up whilst I'm on my way through, if I go down to port 3, I've got my spindle set there, but I also want pin 2 to be the direction of my spindle. So if I go and swap these over to outputs, I can now, it's not an active load, thank you, I can now assign this to spindle spindle direction just so you know that's just a reference for later on when I go to drop down boxes I will find spindle direction if I don't put anything in there the drop down boxes will still give me port 3 pin 2 so like I said you don't have to put anything in there but it is just nice to know later on what it is Input signals. Now this is where some of the fun starts. Remember in the old plugin, if you enabled, if you set up something in your pins config, you would then save everything from the plugin, then you would have to shut down Mac 4, open it back up, go into your Mac signals configurations, Configure something there within your signals, whether it's an input or an output. Shut Mac down again, and then start back up. Well, there's something different here. By default, all your pins in your pin config are already enabled. Within the input signals, you're then going to enable an input, or disable an input. Whilst it's disabled, it's disabling a signal not the actual pin of the ESS. Now within the config, everything that is in the MAC input and output signals are also in here. I've already got my limit switches set up. They're designated to the ESS. Now if I all of a sudden decided, oh, I want my limit override to be run from a control panel which is right next to the ESS but it's already showing that my limit override is assigned to something in the Mac mapping of the keyboard well we can override that now we can just highlight that unmap it from the keyboard and assign it to one of our pins I'm going to go for port 2 pin 3 do it that way so the next time it loads up it will be mapped to the ESS, not the keyboard plugin. As I said before, the alias in the pins config, it's we're, we're able to use port 2 pin 3. If you want to go backwards, we can now find port 2 pin 3. Uh, somewhere, which is that one which we're using. If we give it an alias and say um, limit override and go back into our input signals you'll find it's synchronizing throughout all these tabs whatever you're doing it's synchronizing itself same with the output signals everything is set up exactly the same as it would be in the Mac output panel. I remember the spindle motor that I set up earlier I can now enable the signal for that and tell it it's the spindle direction. Now if you see an ESS only written in the mapping then that is an ESS specific no other plugin will have that within it. And one of the coolest features I love in this Let's say we had a spindle that used the spindle on. We'll assign that to the ESS. And that's our spindle relay. Now what if we wanted to make sure that every time we turned the spindle on, something else would happen as well. So every time the spindle turned on, I want the dust vac to turn on. And I want a warning light to say that the spindle is running well you can 
You can now map three pins to one signal on the output tab. Tab, tab, tab I'm running out of breath here. Of course, that was just an, just an example with the dust vac and everything, but it gives you an idea of what you can do extra in some of these output signals and input signals and just so how easy it is to set up i found it so straightforward to go in and set up the homing tab now this is the part that is probably holding the plug-in back at the moment is that's all physically we're waiting for is for the config part to be done for the homing and at the end nice white box but obviously you can tell what this is going to be and then this will be the documentation for the ess just by clicking a button and off you go so i've changed a few signals bits and pieces within the input signals if i now come out of our ess configuration and go into the mac configuration if I go to the input signals, now the limit override that we set earlier was originally set to the keyboard. Well, we unmapped it from the keyboard and set it to the ESS from the ESS config, and it's automatically written it into the Mac input signals. Whatever you do within the input signals of the ESS plugin, will reflect within the input signals or the output signals whichever you're using within the Mac plugin now it also works the opposite way round if we was in here and we wanted to do an input zero assign it to the ESS and let's use port 2 pin 4 because that's what we've got available for inputs let's use that let's click apply and OK if we now go back into our ESS configuration now our pins config it was port 2 pin 4 which is there it won't show anything up in here unless you give it an alias but in the input signals if we find input Four, was it no input one you can see that it's automatically written that in for us so we know that pin is mapped so we can actually just write that in there um, that'll do me just a load of garble I'll just show you it will carry it across and of course because we've changed something in here if we then went back to our Mac configuration inputs, of course, again, it's transferred it across to here. So that's the new plugin. That's what you're all waiting for. Very much worth the wait, if you ask me. Just get the home in sorted out. And I think there's just a little bit with the probing left to do. But apart from that, I love it. You'll be very pleased once it is released. Well, that's the end of another video. I hope you've enjoyed watching just as much as I have enjoyed making it. And as normal, I'll see you in the next video.